Sunny skies return to Dubai and people are clearing the wet debris after heavy downpour brought Dubai to a standstill and paralyzed other parts of the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Flood conditions continue to impact Dubai after two years worth of rain fell in just 24 hours. According to the meteorological department, it rained up to 259.5 millimeters or some 10 inches. Travel chaos continues to cause delays at the Abu Dhabi International Airport, the world's second busiest airport. The airport authorities say they are facing operational challenges while also advising passengers not to arrive at the airport as runways continue to be inundated with water. Emirates Airlines have extended the suspension of check-in for passengers departing the Dubai airport. The airline cites operational challenges for travelers coming to the Dubai International Airport. The move comes as several flights were delayed or diverted and passengers were told to check their flight status before arriving at the airport. The rainfall also flooded the streets of Dubai. The flash floods submerged the roads, stalling traffic in the Gulf state. The Dubai police has issued a public safety advisory to alert residents about the adverse weather conditions. Meteorologists say that another wave of unstable weather is expected. Behind me, you can see I'm in one of these flooded areas in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. As of right now, authorities are still trying to bail out city streets. They're trying to push abandoned cars out of the way. And at Dubai International Airport, which is the busiest international hub for travelers, they're still trying to find even space on their taxiways and runways to park planes, to take planes coming in, as well as to try to even get flight crews to the airport to take off on other flights. Those visuals on your screen were from Dubai. Dubai obviously observed almost a year's worth of rains in just one day. Other affected areas were Yemen, Oman, Bahrain, Saudi and all have been observing heavy rains. Now talking about the situation that the Gulf states experienced over the last couple of days, flood conditions continue to impact Dubai and like we just told you, two years worth of rain fell in just 24 hours. It rained up to 259.5 millimeters, which is around some 10 inches. And travel chaos, that was something that was noteworthy there. And it continued to cause delays at the Dubai International Airport. And in fact, the airport authorities have said that they are facing operational challenges as well. And they've advised passengers to not arrive at the airport as the runways continue to be inundated with water. Now, to understand the situation better, we have with us Vikram Krishna, who is the co-founder of the Sacred Groves, a community interest company which participates in the process of conservation. Thanks for joining us on today's edition of We on Climate Tracker, Vikram. All right, first up, let's talk about the heavy rains that West Asia has been experiencing. Dubai observed almost a year's worth of rains in just one day. Yemen, Oman, Bahrain, Saudi are all observing heavy rains. And it does come as a surprise because these rain-affected cities are in the desert. What would you say could be the reason behind it? Well, you know, to be honest, I'm not surprised because, uh, you know, I represent the conservation sector. And uh, we've been, uh, you know, uh, noticing over the years uh, climatic conditions uh, deteriorating quite rapidly. So as an example, uh, 2023 was the hottest year recorded in human history. And uh, 2024 is estimated to be even worse. So this is, uh, in, in, in our opinion, um, a direct Im impact uh, of uh, uh, extreme weather conditions, uh, which is only getting accelerated by, um, you know, the changing uh, climatic situations. Now, that's as far as West Asia goes, Vikram. However, heavy rains and floods seem to have become a global phenomenon. Uh, floods are occurring across the world. Parts of Africa have been suffering uh, 
early March in China saw hailstorms, strong winds and heavy rainfall. And towards the end of February, strong winds, rain slashed Brazil. So as we can see, this is like a pan-global phenomenon. What would you say is causing such extreme weather conditions all over the world? So you see, all over the world, uh, nature is getting compromised. So the area that I represent, which is forestry, uh, in a minute, about 10 soccer fields of forests are getting destroyed. And these are primary forests. So if our interview today is for about uh, three or four minutes, that means at least 50 to 70 acres of forest will be destroyed in that time. So, uh, you know, forests are a natural sort of uh, a source of... Uh, Uh, it uh, uh, enables urban uh, levels across the world to get controlled. And as forests are being destroyed, um, it is creating, unfortunately, a negative impact uh, all around us, all over the globe. So, uh, you know, uh, right from, uh, you know, global temperatures rising, so uh, to, you know, difficult climatic conditions, extreme weather events that Dubai noticed uh, on, the, on the 16th of April. Uh, India has been affected by it as well. So if you look at Bangalore, for example, six months back, there were floods. Uh, and now there are severe drought-like conditions. So we really need to, uh, as uh, humanity, reflect on you know who we are, what we're doing, and how can we uh, you know positively impact the situation. So my sort of commentary on that is three things: yeah, uh, note, vote, and search. So first, when it comes to notes, uh, make sure that you look at your own buying power. What are you purchasing? Uh, are you looking at you know uh, incentivizing? Uh, environmentally products, environmentally friendly products and services. Are you introducing them into your lives on an ongoing basis? Second, when it comes to vote, are you uh, demanding more action from your legisl legislators, uh, politics, uh, the companies that you represent? Are you asking the right questions uh, to the management teams in terms of the environment impact of their actions? And last but not the least is SOAR, which is, uh, you know, uh, whenever these extremely challenging situations occur, uh, there's this blame game that starts, right, where you almost have uh, 8 billion people pointing fingers at each other. Uh, I think the action point really is for all of us to think about what do we need to do as individuals, how do we make changes, and how do we make sure that these difficult situations that all of us are experiencing in our own capacity, how can we can influence it? Okay, Vikram, after you mentioned that astounding figure of the amount of forest that is destroyed every minute on this earth, you also gave us the road ahead, uh, possibly for the future, which is note, vote and search, if I have that correctly. Thank you so much, Vikram, for joining us on the broadcast today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.